Hey everyone, George here. Uh, got some cool things to show you this evening. Um, out here in the knife shop, not even made it into the house yet today. It's, uh, it's somewhere after 9 o'clock. Been a real busy day. Been getting a lot accomplished. Um, got a package in the mail today. I'm going to open for you. Uh, it comes from uh, L. Marshall 32, Mr. Constructo Destructo Marshall. Um, I'm going to be opening it up and uh, it is a knife that he has made for a customer and uh, I'm going to be making the sheath for it so he sent it down here and uh, said he wanted me to open it up and uh, see what I think uh, so far from everything I've seen on his videos I absolutely love his knives uh, they're beautiful they're different than anything I've ever seen which you know says a lot in the knife world today when you can look at a knife and say it's different than anything you've ever seen that's really saying something for a knife maker uh, but anyway uh, I was trying to figure out ways to open this thing and uh, you know something that would be kind of cool something you know I don't know if you want to call it epic you know it's not going to be a chainsaw it's not going to be a uh, a uh, angle grinder but I thought what better way to open up a package from L. Marshall 32 than to open it with a knife that I'm making for L. Marshall 32. And uh, here it is. Got a high mirror polish on it. Got some boo funkus there on it. But uh, I figured, you know, why not open it with your knife? Uh, so, here's the package. Here's that famous image distortion technology there. Uh, I want, let's make sure that it's, you know, before I get started, that it's actually. You know, sharp enough for the task. I think it'll, I think it's sharp enough. So, let's fill around in here and make sure I'm not going to, you know, open anything or cut into anything that's Dear Lord, they put insulation in these things. That can't be good for you. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. <coughs> if I'd have known this, I'd have put on my respirator. Anyway, we have that uh, soon to become famous packaging from L. Marshall 32. Brother, you're going to have to get a second job to support your tape habit. <laughs> like I've got a lot of room to talk with the, the way I tape things. We about got it out here. Let's employ the, the GHF1 one more time here. I think some of that just shot me in the eye. Pull this out here. Brother, I will say that uh, that is a great job at boxing that thing. Oh, man. Ooh. Brother. 
y'all have not seen this. If I'm not mistaken, that is a burl. Um, can't remember exactly which burl. Ironwood burl is what that is. It's got a little bit of traveling boo fungus on it. If we can take care of that. Feels sharp. Grab a piece of this paper here. It's sharp, brother. Your edge made it through the shipping. This is a beautiful, beautiful creation, my friend. Beautiful creation. Sorry I was admiring it, guys. I am very impressed, my friend, knowing the tools that you have to work with and the job and the quality that you are putting out. I am seriously impressed. And before I ship this out to the customer, I will also take and clean up some of this package, you know, the 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 boo fungus that happens during shipping because it will be shipped inside the leather sheath. So this won't happen on the way over. But you're right. You know, you have to really take and hold this thing in your hand to appreciate the ergonomics of it really you know to look at these things right off the bat you're thinking wow would that would that actually be comfortable and then you put it in your hand I'm impressed my friend I am definitely impressed a little bit of tape boo fungus there. It is sharp. It's got a hiccup, but I think the hiccup is actually from tape. So, uh, there it is, brother. Uh, your beautiful blade unboxed, and now. <laughs> it's got tape boo fungus all over it off your blade that will be coming soon to a location that is you and I do I do this right here showing this knife as much for Marshall as everybody else one thing guys this this knife was actually uh, Marshall's contest knife where he won my last contest and uh, it's taken me a while there's been a lot of obstacles I've had to overcome with this knife uh, there's a lot of uh, things that you'll see and I'll, I'll do another showing of this knife after I get it finished and, and you'll understand why but uh, for one thing uh, Marshall found out that I had some D2 steel and uh, I was like, dude, well, you know, that, that wasn't really in the contest. And he's like, dude, it's worth it. You know, I'll, I'll pay the extra if I have to. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. So this is actually the first blade that I've made out of D2 tool steel. Uh, I must say that its heat treat is something that is very different from what I'm used to. Uh, it's a very complex heat treat. And... Uh, but I do believe I've gotten it right. Um, but, you know, that was one of the obstacles, you know, getting used to working with D2. It is a very tough steel to work with. Um, you, you go through a lot of belts with it, uh, especially in your grind after your heat treat. Oh, wow, do you go through the belts. But, you know, as you can see, it's got file work that goes all the way to this false edge here which that is a false edge very thin but it's a false edge uh, and then 
all the way around you know that this hasn't been cleaned up yet but all the way around this thing has some aggressive jimping very aggressive jimping uh, but like I said again I will show this to you all again once I get it finished uh, some th other things I've been working on I want to talk to you about uh, I've made a, another Tanto uh, this one is for a customer in California who works for uh, law enforcement out there and he he really liked the Tanto so he asked me to make him one and here it is high mirror polish as you can see still got a little bit of oil on it uh, it has black G10 handles which are bead blasted uh, and so are the, these stainless steel pins stainless steel lanyard tube uh, the handles are bead blasted and it has if you can see that uh, toxic green liners very thin handle profile I think this one came out really sweet uh, great little knife uh, it's sharp as well uh, and he asked for a sheath system that he could attach to his duty belt and uh, carry scout carry uh, so I got in the you know in the in the leather making shop there uh, aka my dining room which my wife is still kind of sore about because she wants her dining room back uh, but I got a little bit creative with the sheath design and here it is the sheath is very reminiscent also of the tanto shape you've got double stitching here and it is also wet formed guys the retention on this thing is phenomenal uh, for it to be a leather sheath I would akin the retention uh, to just as good as Kydex that's how strongly I feel about the retention on this I mean you honestly you have to put that in there and then these straps these retention straps are for the scout carry undo those those are attached via rivets slide that around the belt snap snap and there you go This is uh, one of my customers knives finished up and it will be shipping out Wednesday uh, also uh, Earl from VA great talking to you on the phone bro really guys uh, if you've not went and checked out Earl's uh, channel go check him out subscribe him great guy a lot of cool videos there um, and you know having the chance to talk to him uh, via the telephone just a super nice guy super great guy and uh, what I discussed with him was the bead blast that I'd done on the Tanto and after doing testing with it and you know seeing how that finish reacted um, I wasn't satisfied with it uh, left the way it was straight out of the bead blast it stained fast um, I guess it was the porous nature of the steel maybe it was just my ignorance in the matter of you know the bead blasting which is highly possible but I'm learning quick uh, but I discussed it with Earl and uh, he was great with it what I went ahead and did was I took this the his Tanto 200 to just a satin finish and there that is Earl there's your satin finish all the way around sharp as well just let you know it'll be sharp when it leaves my house
uh, and it will I just finished sharpening it a little bit ago and it will be stropped as well before it leaves the house uh, it's hair shaving sharp at this point but I still like to strop the blades even after that just to smooth out that edge Earl this will be being shipped to you as well on Wednesday have to put my maker's mark on it before I ship it as well as this knife for a customer in California put my maker's mark on it and it will be shipping on Wednesday as well uh, one other thing I wanted to share with you right quick uh, I do have a lot of orders in at this time um, I do ask that you be patient with me uh, I do work as fast as I can though with my disabilities it, uh, it 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 takes more time than I guess it would with somebody regular I, I can't work solid you know for hours on end uh, I work for an hour or so and I have to sit down you know and I still I still try to work while I'm sitting down but finding work you know that I can still work on sitting down uh, it's tough sometimes but uh, uh, guys you know I'm doing the best that I can and I'm going as fast as I can uh, but I pray that you uh, be patient with me and uh, I guarantee you'll be satisfied with the end product when I get done. It may take a little bit longer, but I am guarantee you'll be satisfied with it. Um, that's just my nature. I don't stop until something is perfect in my eyes. Uh, guys, thank you for your time. Thank you for your views. Thank you for your wonderful support. Uh, Marshall, brother. I'm loving this. I'm loving this. I just might have to have me one of these. Uh, great blade, Marshall. Great, great. Uh, guys, once again, thank you. God bless you, and may God bless everything that you put your hands to. Take care.